Hey, so for this first video, I thought I'd tell you the story of how I fell in love with my best friend. It all started when I was 12. I had to change school because I was moving in with my mom and stepfather. I was being teased a lot at my previous school for being gender non-conforming, so it was very important for me to make a good impression. I had been seeing a therapist since I was eight for what they called my masculinity issues. We would practice how to walk or how to speak like a boy. More importantly, my therapist wanted me to make friends with boys. But I just didn't feel like it, so I stopped playing altogether and instead started spending every recess drawing or reading. Oh, and that's me with my favorite dress at the time. I had a closet full of them because my father was working night shifts and would just give my brothers and I a monthly allowance to buy our own clothes. At my new school, I became the arts and craft teacher's pet because of my drawings and also because I could name every painter she showed us during the first week. I mean, I guess I did know a lot of stuff about lesbian early 20th century painter Marie Laurencin. Was that weird? Anyhow, that's how I became friends with my table mate, Matt. Because of my status as a teacher's pet, our teacher would let us do whatever in the back of the class. He thought I was funny, so I kept passing him comics I drew in class. My goal was to have him laugh so loudly that he'd get in trouble with the teachers, which did happen a few times. It gave him class cred, so it was a win-win situation. And by the way, that dark folder you see me carry around is my legendary private drawing folder. You see, it was private because of the zipper, which allowed me to keep secret drawings in it. It was mostly just shirtless hot anime guys. I was going through a phase. There was this one time that I forgot it on the cafeteria table and went for class. When I found out, I rushed out of the room. Turns out the cafeteria staff had simply put it aside to clean the tables. That was the most stressful 10 minutes of my whole life. Eventually, Matt asked me if I wanted to have lunch with him and his other friend, Henry. That made me really happy since I completely lost the habit of spending time with anyone outside of class. Before that, I was simply having lunch at home. Since there was no one there during the day, it was the perfect time to wear whatever I wanted and listen to Broadway musicals on loop. Henry liked to make homophobic and transphobic jokes. I didn't really like Henry, but I wanted to spend more time with Matt, so I just let it slide. I started to spend evenings at his house. We basically just rewatched the same news ground videos over and over again. That's the early 2000s for you. It wasn't going well at home, since my stepfather disapproved of my lack of masculinity, so every time he said he wanted to go to my house instead, I changed the subject. His mom seemed to like me a lot, and I liked her too. We would talk about literature together. She was really amazed at my extensive knowledge of 19th century French novels. This one time, Matt came to my locker and he was like, buckle up, you'll never guess what my mom said after you left on Saturday. So I'm like, what did she say? And he's like, she thinks you're gay, that you're in love with me. That's hilarious. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, so funny. After that, we really became best friends. We hung out all the time. We even had an ironic best friend theme song. But Matt had a serious problem. He liked to go through my stuff. Also, he kept inviting me for a sleepover, but I couldn't. I was still wetting the bed, and it made me absolutely terrified to sleep anywhere else than at my house or at my grandmother's place. I finally agreed to a sleepover, and I brought some kind of diaper my grandmother had me wear whenever I visited her so I wouldn't make a mess on her guest bed. The evening was going well, but at some point I went to the toilet, and when I came back I found him going through my stuff. He was like, what's that? And I was so ashamed. His mom told him not to make fun of me, and I must have worked because I never heard about it again. Eventually, I agreed to invite him at my stepfather's house. It was by the Mille River, which means Thousand Islands in French, because there's a lot of tiny islands everywhere. Céline Dion, famous singer from the area, even had a castle built on one of them. We went on a canoe ride, and when we came back, I had to use the washroom again. 
When I came back to my bedroom, Matt had gone through my closet and decided to put on my precious orange frilly dress. He was laughing and asked, what are you doing with that? So I came up with a bad excuse like, oh, it's a costume to play pretend. So he dared me to wear it at school the next day and I said, no, you wear it. And that was a mistake because he agreed. We had an English presentation to do the next week and he wore it then. The dress was a hit. At the end, classmates could ask questions and of course, everybody wanted to know where the dress was from. And that's how it was revealed that I had a closet full of them. For the next year, people would ask me to come to school wearing one. But I had learned from experience that it wouldn't be a good idea. When I was in second grade, I was obsessed with hair clips and once wore two of them at school. They had ladybugs on them, but older kids in the schoolyard didn't think they were cute. At the beginning of the following school year, Matt got a girlfriend. I was obviously quite jealous. What did she have that I didn't? Could she say that she took a shower with him during the last summer? I bet she couldn't. Of course, we still had our swimming suits on from going in the pool earlier, but still. Yes, that's, that's what BFFs do, right? It only lasted a few weeks with that girl who turned out to be pretty cool. She's actually the only classmate I still talk to from that time. I was still getting people asking me to wear girl clothes at school and I finally said yes for our school play. It was about the adventures at a TV station and people just loved my idea of my character being Céline Dion's mom, which had a famous cooking show on French Canadian TV back then. The little skit I wrote was a huge success. My character simply put a TV dinner in a microwave and bragged about her famous daughter for five minutes. I had a standing ovation and at the end, many of my classmates' parents came to tell me how much they loved it. Everyone seemed happy except my stepfather. On the way back home, he started insulting me, calling me slurs and telling me I'd end up being a sex worker in Montreal's neighborhood. A few weeks later, I came home from school to find him emptying my closet from all the dresses and skirts I had. We got into a big argument. As soon as he went out of my bedroom, I called Matt to ask him if I could go and sleep at his place. When I got there, he wanted to know what was happening, but I was too ashamed to mention the clothes. I just told him I had a fight with my stepfather and that was it. After several days of completely avoiding my parents, it was decided that I would go back to live alone with my father. I told Matt in the morning and being practical, he said, Oh cool, so you won't have to live with your stepfather anymore. I hate him. All I could think of was how I would need to change school. My dad lived two hours away. I told him, yeah, but we won't see each other as much and you're my best friend. So we were both just sad. I moved and we didn't see each other for many months. We just talked on MSN Messenger. At some point, he tells me he'd really like to invite me to his birthday party. His mom would come and fetch me and the party would be in his cool new friend's basement. I accepted. It was the first time I felt so out of my comfort zone. People were constantly yelling homophobic and misogynistic slurs. At some point, they all ditched me to go watch porn videos on the computer. So I stayed in the bedroom and read a book. The next morning, before anybody was awake, I called my mom to ask her to come get me. It was the first time I talked to her since I was kicked out of the house six months earlier. Matt messaged me a few days later to thank me for coming to his birthday party. I was glad it meant that much for him, but truth be told, I really hated it. I had recently came out as trans to some online friends, so I just told him without thinking much about it. By the way, I like guys. And he was like, oh, okay. We didn't talk much after that. I don't think it's because he thought less of me, but our lives became pretty different. My mom ended up inviting me over for Christmas and I got a new sewing machine with which I made this bitchin' dress you see here. And we are now at the choose your own adventure part of the channel. You get to choose what story I'm gonna tell next. 
You can choose between how getting a sewing machine at Christmas led me to adjust the pants of the Prime Minister's son. How did I get diagnosed with the genders? Or please tell us more about your short-lived acting career. To vote, you just need to indicate your choice in the poll. I would also love to hear your own experiences in the comments. Until then, I hope you enjoyed the story. Thank you for watching.